Good afternoon and welcome to the Queen's Athletic and Recreation Center in Kingston, Ontario. It's Gales Men's Basketball on OUA TV. A sold out crowd at the Arc is going to watch the top seeded Queen's Gales host the 10th seeded Brock Badgers in the Wilson Cup Championship game. I'm Bill Miklas along with me, Jacob Ewing. And Jacob, we take a look at the bracket for these playoffs. It's the Gales, the top seed, doing what they should have done or were expecting to do, and then Brock blowing up one side of the bracket. Yeah, the Badgers have done a phenomenal job, a Cinderella story type-esque journey. They've made it all the way to the finals, upsetting three amazing teams just to make it right here, including last year's champions. The Badgers, as you see, they took out the defending champions, as, Carl, as Jacob said, the Carlton Ravens by one, then beat Ottawa surprisingly by 23 last Saturday before beating Western by three. For the Gales, six point win over McMaster last Saturday in the quarters and a double overtime win over Toronto Wednesday. The two key players in this game, they've been phenomenal in these playoffs. They certainly have. We look at the side of Queens. Lucas Silas in the playoffs, averaging 35 points per game, dropping 39 in the semifinals games against Toronto. He's been phenomenal, and he's definitely going to be a big part for the Gales if they want to finish off the ending today. And we look at the side of Brock with Chuente. He has been phenomenal. He has been the front runner that has started this whole Cinderella story. He's going to need to come up big in this game if they really want to play upset against the Gales. They met in November in the regular season, their only meeting. Brock won the game 76-72. The Gales fell behind early, came back in the fourth to take a, four, a six point lead, only for the Badgers to come back and win the game by four. They met in the Wilson Cup Finals, Jacob, two years ago, a game Brock won in St. Catharines easily by 20. Yeah, and you got to think that Queens, the Queens players that were in that game, that it's got to be on their mind. They want the revenge, and they have their opportunity in front of this sold-out crowd. The electricity in this place is amazing. That's definitely, the revenge has got to be on their mind tonight. Gales being introduced. Again, a sold-out crowd here at the Arc. First time the Wilson Cup game has been played in Kingston. Again, as Jacob and I were just talking about two years ago, it was played between these two teams, but in St. Catharines. Our referees today, Farhan Bag and Chris Delaney both did the semifinal here at the Arc Wednesday night. One of the best basketball games I've been a part of, that's for sure. And Greg Spagnoli is the other official. The Badgers are in their red with the blue trim, white numbers and lettering. The Gales in their usual gold with the blue trim and the tricolor writing. Michael Kelvin is in the starting lineup. Connor Kelly had started the previous two playoff games, but Kelvin in, you wonder if that's to guard. Chuente, Chuente takes the jump and wins it, and the visitors will control the basketball. This is Budioso, Chuente, Ellis, Budioso, picked up by Tennant, Javon Brown, Brown against Calvin, bumped, no call, and he got the basket. Yeah, great bit of mall movement there, right around the arc, getting all players involved, and they got the chance at the rim. Lucas Silas. Fofo a dead again. Penetrates. Kelvin, he can make that in and out. Outlet to Chuente. Brown for three at the other end, off the heel, and Adedigan couldn't control the boards. Brown fakes the three, swung around. Ellis will try a three and bury it. Yeah, Brock with a five, uh, quick 5-0 run here early on, trying to, trying to get the momentum going their way. Lucas Silas 
35 point a game average and Budioso just picked up the foul, shakes out his jaw a bit as he might have taken an inadvertent elbow from Lucas Silas. Silas named the defensive player of the year in the OUA. His head coach, Steph Ferry, the coach of the year in the conference. Chuente, the lone Brock All-Star, second team OUA All-Star. Aaron Tennant swings to Adedigan with eight on the shot clock. Adedigan penetrates, that should be a charge, is. Chuente made sure the official saw it, but I think he was there, Jacob. Yeah, good way for Chuente to get his feet planted and just take all that body contact and hit the floor hard, he gets the charge. Both these teams have qualified for next week's national championships in Quebec City, but their seeding and who's the OUA champion will be decided in the next couple of hours. Chuente against Cole Sillis. Budioso kicks it out, Brown for three, no. Raw offensive rebound by Ellis goes out of bounds, but a good sign if you're Brock, they're getting a couple of offensive rebounds early. Yeah, Brock has looked incredible early offensive. As I said, it's a 5-0 run right now. Queen still held scoreless. If Brock can increase this run and get the start off early, that'd be incredible for them. Luca having trouble getting by Budioso, who you can imagine has been gearing up for him. Three by Luca misses. Rebound Chuente. Brown. Trying to get loose of a dead again. Chuente for three, got it! What a start if you're Brock. Huge three by Chuente. The crowd is silenced right now. That's exactly what the Badgers want. This is what they did in St. Catharines. They started quickly on the Gales, and the Gales had to spend pretty much into the fourth quarter to get back into the game and even take a lead. Missed by Tenen on a nice move. Just couldn't finish. Chuente, picked up by a dead again. Chuente, backs down, Brown for three. Got it! Timeout, Gales! That's it's 11 0 to open the first quarter. That's a must need a timeout from the Gales. They're 0 for 4 on their offensive possession so far. The Badgers have been incredible all over the floor, converting on tons of opportunities on the offense and on the defense. You got to think that the Badgers are loving how they're playing right now. From providing resources to officiating games to telling stories and more, the OUA would like to extend a sincere thank you to all of their tremendous partners, Milk to Go Sport, Wilson, Centaur Products, Invest Hotels, Baron Rings, and Nothers, the award store, for the continued support of University Sport in the province and their meaningful contributions to the overall experience. 11-0, Brock Badgers leading to open this Wilson Cup OUA championship game. Gale's football team is here to cheer on the basketball team. And unlike Wednesday night when they were right behind the Toronto bench, the Brock supporters have the first five rows and so they're gonna have to be louder, I'm sure. But what, as you said, Jacob, what a job by Brock to start things off and quiet this crowd by jumping to the 11-0 lead. That's exactly what they needed to do. You know, they come in as the underdog. The 10th seed, as we already talked about, they're trying to play upset. And listen to this crowd, it's completely silent right now. This is exactly what Brock wanted. Cam Bettis checked in. Kelvin to the bench. Cole Sillis, Tennant runs into Luca and hits the shot. That's a big bucket for the Gales to get them on the board. It certainly is, as you can see the crowd rise up after that one. Almost three minutes into this game. Tennant picks up Budioso. Now he's picked up by Cole Sillis. Tennant will guard Chuente. Chuente turns, kicks it out. Brown for another three, yep. The lead is 12. Brock shooting it great. And a jump ball possession arrow belongs to the Gales. But the Badgers doing everything they want right now for their head coach, Willie Manigot.
Cole Sillis for three, got it. Cole's been quiet in these playoffs. And the Gales hit their first long range shot. Yeah, that's a huge three from Cole Sillis. Only averaging 0.5 threes made in this playoffs. Hopefully he wakes up in this game. Tennant got a hand on it. Eight on the shot clock. Budioso looking to penetrate. Long two, got it. Rock's not missing. That goes on all game. Queens doesn't have a chance. And a pass by Cole, saved by Bet, and his attempt is picked off. Brown, and now Chuente. Turns, up, got it. The lead is a Baker's dozen. Brock doing a phenomenal job all over the floor, making Queens panic on the offense and getting it done on the offense. And they're gonna call a foul here as the Dedigan drove. Chuente may have gotten popped in the face with the follow through. The foul is on George Bawamba Nangandu, and the trainer will have to come out for Shuente. Ooh, not something you want to see for the Badgers, especially no. this early on. As we saw, there's player to watch in this game, and for Shuente to be sitting on the in the paint right now after a big hard hit to the body, well, it's not what you want to see for the Badgers. See. Right now, his back is to us. The trainer came on, so he will have to go to the bench. So you wonder if maybe he's been cut. Here's the last sequence. Just but the Badgers' defense, we've been talking about their offense, Jacob. Their defense has been just as good early. Yeah, they've been amazing all over the floor. As you just saw there, they made Queens panic on the offense. And when they panic, they try to throw it back inside. You can't do that. It's a turnover right away. And even on that possession, they went down the floor and put it in the net. As I mentioned, both these teams are going to Quebec City next week for the national championships. The Badgers, who finished the regular season 11 and 11, but oftentimes that can be misleading. You heard other teams talk about you didn't want to play Brock in the playoffs, and certainly Carlton, Ottawa, and Western can testify to that. Yeah, Brock has been phenomenal here in the playoffs. I guess that's what playoffs basketball is about, right? It's one game. And Brock has shown that they come up in the huge moments. As we see Chewing and get, take, get up right there. That's huge for Brock, as you can see, he's just walking off. It looks like it may be like a bloody nose. So the, we'll see how long he has to stay on the bench again. He was the Brock player to watch when we opened this broadcast. But the Badgers have had a leading, different leading scorer in all three of their playoff games. Brown was the high scorer with 20 plus points on Wednesday in their semifinal win in London, Ontario. Now, a dead again will be going to the line for two, I believe. They'll have to clean up the floor, which I think they did. Again, the foul was on Fawamba Nagandu. Badgers with the first 11 points of this game, lead by 13. First free throw is good. Brock has shot 75 free throws in their three playoff games. Their opponents, only 37. They had 42 free throw attempts to Carlton's 21, and 21 attempts to Western's seven. So that's an important thing to follow. On for Brock is the Kingston native and first team rookie of the year, All-Star. Andrew McKenna, the graduate of Frontenac High School, picked up by Cole Sillis. Also into the game is Xavier Fearon. McKenna's pass gets partially blocked. Fearon with the fadeaway, didn't get the rim, and the Gales will push. A dead again. Cole wants it for three. Instead, he steps around. Did he get called for the charge? Count it, and the foul on Fearon. Nope, that's on Brown. But now the crowd's making some noise. This is what the Gales needed. This is what, this is the Gales we're, they're known for doing, you know. A huge defensive play where they make uh, 
The Badgers panic, they don't get the shot away, they come down the floor fast and the transition, and they get the shot to go and one. We'll see if he can finish at the line. Lucas Silas came in averaging 35 points a game, has none yet, but Brother Cole looking for his sixth, gets it. Gales are within eight. That's huge for Cole, as you were just saying. He averages nine here in the playoffs. He's already at six tonight. That's two thirds of what he already averages. For Brock, Chuente has gone to the dressing room. Hope to see him back soon. Brown for three, no. But then he just saves the ball. Good effort by Javon Brown. Drive by Fearon, got bumped by Isaac Kruger, who's onto the floor. And the Badgers will get two free throws. Yeah, as you were saying, Chuente going to the locker room. Not, not the, what the Badgers wanted, but the Badgers do play a team game. It's team basketball, so even without Chuente, they're just going to have to work as a five, of, as a collective together to get things done. Xavier, Xavier, Xavier Fearon puts in the first free throw. Crowd making noise, as you would expect, and I'm sure the Gales would say that's what happened to us in St. Catharines two years ago when we played the Wilson Cup game against Brock. Luca to the hoop, stripped out of bounds by the Badgers. Yeah, not bad battle back here from the Queens Gales. They were down by 14 at one point, only still down by 10, so still a fairly decent margin, but they have an offensive inbound here. We'll see if they can make some work. Bet for three, no. Cole keeps it alive, Adetikin gets it. Step through, gets it to Kruger. Kruger goes up, stripped by Ngandu. Early on, it looks like teams are gonna be allowed to play. Tip, and Cole Sillis with the steal. Adetikin, the quirky release. Doesn't fall, Kruger got the rebound. Who's the foul on? I believe it's Ngandu's second. So no Chuente, he's in the locker room with an injured nose. Now two fouls on Ngandu. Nope, they gave it to Ellis in fact. So still only one for Ngandu. So that's good for Brock. Kruger around, might have got walked. But now Ngandu's got his second. Yeah, that was great work by Kruger to use his size and his body to try to get around the defender, and then he went up hard, gets fouled, he'll have two from the line. Marlon Leston has to come in. Bugiosa checks back in for Brock. Ngandu, Firon, and Ellis go to the bench. Also on comes Devontae Hackett. Isaac Kruger hits the first free throw. When they met in November in St. Catharines, Brock went to the line 25 times, Gales went to the line 16. Neither team is high in the stand in conference standings for free throw percentage. Kruger gets one of two. McKenna being harassed by Lucas Silas, who now turns to guard Budioso. Budioso picked up by Adet again, knocked out of bounds, and then saved by Brown, then stolen back. A little bit of hot potato. The shot clock resets. Hackett kicks it out. Budioso, and that pass picked off, but he was fouled by Bet, and Cam knew it. Yeah, some back and forth basketball we just saw in that last play. No team seemed to get established with the ball. Brock finally get it back, trying to make something happen. But as you just said, we have a foul on the play. It looks to be an offensive re uh, inbound, pardon me, as uh, Brown steps up to take that one. Adetigan goes off as Kelvin returns for the Gales. Brock with 16 on the shot clock, so plenty of time. Budioso. Brown takes a quick look at the shot clock. Drives on Cole Sillis. Hackett, long three, got it! Badgers are on fire from behind the arc and they're back up 12. Luca to the hoop, layup, got it! 
That's great, his game. That's a great pump fake by Luca there. Gets the defender looking, then just goes around him and drives hard. Budioso, under three minutes left first quarter. It's been a good one, especially if you're a Brock fan. Hackett. McKenna bobbled it. Three by Hackett off the heel and a foul. If this is Kruger, it'll be his second. I believe he held Leston. And quickly, Tennant will come in for Kruger. Ellis will return for Brock. Brown will get his first rest. Fourteen on the shot clock for the Badgers. Leston up top, Budioso. Shot clock running down. Budioso splits from the foul line. No rebound. Cole Sillis pushes it up the floor. Cole backing down. Leston goes up. Can't finish, but that's a finish. Michael Kelvin. Gales within eight, and there's no goal sending in FIBA. You can touch it on the cylinder. Budioso, Brock taking their time, trying to quiet the crowd down. Three by Ellis, that'll do it. And back up 11. That's a silencer right there. The crowd was buzzing, and the Badgers come down the other the other way and just make everybody silent. Cole to answer. Got it! Tennant got pushed down, no call. Lead is eight for Brock, under 90 seconds left first quarter. And then thrown out of bounds, McKenna and Hackett got mixed up. It's been a tough start for the all-rookie team member, Andrew McKenna, but you would imagine so, his first time back in Kingston as a Brock Badger. Bet, and that pass too high for Cole Sillis. Yeah, maybe some nerves all around the court, yep. to be honest. You see a lot of scrambled plays and a lot of plays that just, well, they end bad. They go out of bounds and miscalculated passes. Budioso. We approach the final minute of an entertaining first quarter. McKenna, hand off to Hackett. Hackett, spins, floater, no. Rebound taken away by Leston. Three, Budioso, no. Save, Leston again, and a foul on Tennant. And right now, the Badgers are doing the work on the offensive glass. That is how the Badgers need to play if they want to make this somewhat of an upset happen. They're playing fast, they're, they have grit, they're just going for any sort of ball and they're not giving up. They're trying to outwork the Gales and well, it, every, it, everybody knows every championship game, they need that, everybody needs that grit and well, determination to make it happen. Kruger replaced by a dead again. First free throw good by Leston. Both teams shooting it well from the line. Leston makes both, the lead's back to 10. Substitution for Budiosa, it's number 14, Thierry Shibola. And that'll give Budioso a 45 second break plus the two minutes in between quarters. Leston picks up Cole Sillis. Cam Bet for three, got it! Gales within seven. And that's Bet, the sharpshooter, averaging 3.5 three-pointers in this playoffs. Well, he comes up big with that three. Second and a half difference between shot and game clock. Shibola, over Tennant. In, out, Adetigan's got time to get a shot off. Looks at the shot clock, pushing it up. Layup, got it! End to end! At Richardson, it'd be a touchdown. Here it's a layup to end the first quarter. Gales fall behind 
by as many as 13 in the first quarter, but they'll go into the break down five. We're back with the Wilson Cup after this. You're watching Gales Men's Basketball on OUA TV. Welcome to the inaugural and the first of many diversity in sports quadrant. Congratulations to everybody for making this all become a reality. And welcome back to a packed Queens Athletic and Recreation Center in Kingston, Ontario. It's the OUA Wilson Cup Men's Basketball Championship between the 10th seeded Brock Badgers and the top seeded Queens Gales. Bill Miklas along with Jacob Ewing. And Jacob, in that first quarter, Brock played a heck of a quarter. Gales closed well in the last minute, but Brock has to be happy up five on the road. Yeah, I thought there was two different stories in that first quarter. The first half was all the Badgers. We saw them come out incredibly strong. And we, they got up to a lead of as big as 13, and then the second the second half was a different story. The Gales fight back, and now they have themselves in only a five-point game. Big stories from that first quarter. Brock's second-team OUA All-Star, Jordan Chuente, injured midway through the first quarter, and has not returned from the dressing room. Looked like he took a shot to his nose, but there might also be a worry of a concussion. And with Brock already into Nationals next week, yes, you want to win the OUA championship, but as Steph Barry said yesterday, both teams know they've got the security net that they're playing again next week. So Brock will start with the basketball to open the second quarter. Leston is on the floor instead of Schuente. Other than that, it's all Brock starters from the beginning of the game. No Lucas Silas on the floor for the Gales to start the second quarter. Ellis inside to Leston, who had some good minutes late in that opening quarter. Brown drives, floater, no, got his own rebound. Blocked by Kelvin. Is it goaltending? Yes. I thought it was goaltending. I mean, you can touch the ball in the cylinder, but you can't block the shot when it's on its way down. I know what you're thinking. What's the difference? Talk to FIBA. Cole Sillis gets it back from Aaron Tennant, fires a three, got it! Cole's got 12. It's a playoff high for him already, and we've only played 10 minutes, 44 seconds. Budioso against Bet. Three-pointer by Ellis, short. Adetigan clears. Gales down four, long pass. Knocked out of bounds by Ellis, who you could tell was playing possum, daring Bet to throw that long pass. And Willie Mangiot. Manny got my apologies. We'll call a timeout for the Badgers. He took a look to the dressing room, I think, to see if Shuente was coming. Not sure what the word is on that. Milk 2 Go Sport is the exclusive, exclusive dairy partner of the OUA and presenting sponsor for today's player of the game, Milk 2 Go Sport. Let's get going. And you look at those first quarter stats, Jacob, and the rebounding, not much. I thought by the stats that Brock would have much more of an advantage. But it's only seven to five. But they're six of 11 from behind the arc. And that's a big reason. That's 18 of their 30 points 
And Chuente is coming back. Just making his way now. Yeah, that's and gave the thumbs up to his head coach. So he's coming back on the floor just when Brock needs him. Yeah, it's a huge addition back to the Badgers. You can tell that Chuente, he's a leader. He's a leader in this locker room. He's a leader on the court. And while he leads the team in points here in the playoffs, Brock is be, has to be so glad to have him back. 8.57, we're early second quarter. The nose is taped. And it's good that he's back. You don't want a team to be missing one of their top players in a championship game. Exactly. Cole Sillis for three again. Got it again! The lead is down to one! Cole Sillis has came to show up in this game. He's already got 15 here in the second quarter. Budioso into the body of Bet. Can't finish and no call. Cole might not want to leave him open. Gets it back from Tennant. Bet. Budioso pokes it. Eight on the shot clock. Bet almost traveled. A dead again. Shot clock running down. Got his man in the air. Puts up the shot. No. Rebound Budioso. Juente, his first touch of the ball. Will back down a dead again. Fade away. Short. Rebound Kelvin. Now Brock's gone cold. Cole for three again, in and out. And a foul on Adet again. He's upset because I think he got the ball first, but his follow through is what got, I think, Juente in the face. Lucas Silas returns, Kai Dolan up off the bench for the first time for the Gales. Tennant and Adet again to the bench. So still Brock leads. Gales have had back-to-back -back possessions to get their first lead of the day and haven't been able to do it. Chuente for three, got it. And just like that, the lead's back to four. Luca. Kelvin trying to answer off the heel. Luca with the rebound, penetrates. Cole's open for three, no. Tipped up, Kelvin pulls it out again. Bet fakes the three, drives, hangs, and gets hammered. If it's Nagondo, do it's his third. Let's see who got it. It is. And Leston will have to come back in, but he gave Brock some great minutes when he came in for Ngandu earlier. Bet at the line for two. Exactly seven minutes left in the second quarter. The OUA Championship in men's basketball. Queens and Brock. And the Gales trail 33-31. Badgers. Budioso, Chuente, Budioso, drives, Brown, penetrates, puts up the shot, got it. Good bucket by Brown there just to get to the net and put it up. Bet misses on the pass from Lucas Silas. Chuente goes up, got it. Tough shot. Gales by, or Brock by six. And even with all those mo uh, missed minutes, Chuente still at 10 points. That's how crucial he is to this Brock team. That long three, no. Gales might be settling for too many threes. And Brock, Chuente the other way. Shrugs away, Cole Sillison scores. Timeout, Gales. Leads grown to eight. 
Yeah, that's just been a great battle back by the Badgers. Gales came out so strong here at the start of the quarter. It was a one point game at one point, 30 to 29. And then all of a sudden the Badgers just kicked back into drive and well, they now have themselves with an eight point lead. Chuente has been so crucial here in the second quarter. He's got himself, well at least, uh, he's at 12 already, even with all that missed time. He's been such, he was so missed there in the first quarter, but now he's back and well, the Badgers are rolling. OUA.ca is your source for scores, stats, schedules, and stories from around the conference, spanning 20 members, 23 sports, 39 championships, including today's Wilson Cup men's basketball finale. The online hub for OUA information helps fans dive deeper into your favorite sports, teams, and standouts from around the conference. Visit OUA.ca to learn more. As you said, Jacob, great point. With all the time that Jordan Chuente was in the dressing room getting looked at, he comes back on the floor and all of a sudden he's tied for the for the team high in scoring. Yeah, and that second half of that first quarter was, well, it was mostly Gales. I say they dominated that. They kind of make that comeback. That was why it was like a four-point game at the end of the first. And during that time, that was when Chuente was in the locker room. They had their big run at the beginning. Now that he's back, well, they're back up to eight-point lead. 5.50 time left first half. Gales got to within 30-29. A couple of possessions to take the lead. Didn't. Then a three by Brock has started them on this 9-1 run. That forced the Gales final time out of the half. Luca trying to get free over Chuente. Short. And guess who got the rebound? He's doing it all. Brown for three. It's a double-digit lead. Tennant, short with the shot. Budioso to Ellis. Gales don't have any more timeouts. Ellis for three, yes! And here goes Brock again. That has three possessions in the row. The Badgers have connected, and on back-to-back -back threes, they're rolling right now. Kelvin for three, no. Brock's hitting them. Gales aren't, and Cole Sillis just got a foul. And it's been Chuente all over the floor. You see him right there on, on the ground in the paint after they're grabbing that huge rebound and then ripping it out of the hands of the Queens defender. Chuente has been great tonight and well, it looks like he'll have an uh, inbound on his own baseline. Second team foul on the Gales. Just past the midway point of this second quarter. Badgers scored the first 11 points of the game. Gales have gotten to within one in this second quarter, but now trail by 14. Budioso for three, in and out. Bet, alley-oop and Tennant too close to the hoop. It's off Brock and out of bounds. Yeah, it looked like Tennant grabbed the ball in midair. He knew his momentum was already going out of bounds. It looked like he threw it off the Badgers defender, and then that one just goes out of bounds. A great heads up play there by Tennant. In the moment, it's got to be a split second decision, and while he makes the correct one, they'll have an offensive rebound. Pardon me, inbound. Luca for three. No, and Tennant couldn't get the rebound. A lot of three-pointer attempt, uh, attempts here by the Gales here in the second quarter. And, well, they just haven't connected like they were in the first. On the other hand, though, the Badgers are also attempting a lot of threes, and they have been absolute money beyond the arc. And, well, we'll see if that continues here uh, coming, out, coming into the second half of the second quarter. Budioso. Brock by 14. Brown. Almost lost it. Gets it back, drives, layup, no. Got it back, blocked. <laughs> On the floor, and a dead again and less than are having words. Yeah, 
a scrambled play there as no team can really get any stable possession. It ends up in the paint and then pretty much three players on each team go diving for that ball and well, we'll see which way this possession goes. I'm not 100% sure. So it's a jump ball. Possession arrow belongs to the Gales. And Brock is going to call a timeout with four minutes left. First half, and they lead by 14. And we don't get the, we won't get the first half stats till the end of the second quarter, but you have to imagine that the Brock Badgers three-point shooting percentage is gonna be through the roof. Yeah, it's been great tonight. They had six in the first quarter alone, and then here in the second quarter, I wouldn't be surprised if they've already matched six alone. And that's why they have themselves a 14-point lead. They do a great job of moving it around the arc, and then they drive inside. But when they drive inside, they look up, and then they kick it back out to the open man. And, well, they've been great tonight beyond the arc, and we'll see if they continue that here in the late end of the first half. Calling all OUA fans. The OUA TV Premium Pass is available now. With the Premium Pass, fans can enjoy an ad-free experience Watch all live and on-demand games anytime. Clip and share their favorite moments and enjoy and enjoy live DVR. Don't wait. Learn more about the Premium Pass and purchase yours today at OUA.TV. Here on OUA.TV, it is the Wilson Cup Final. The Gales hosting the Brock Badgers. A rematch from two years ago in St. Catharines. And right now, at least in the first half, it's going the same way as the meeting in St. Catharines went. All Badgers leading by 14. Gales got to within one earlier this quarter after giving up the first 11 points of the game. Tennant, good take, but Leston blocks it out of bounds and he has something to say and Chuente pulls him away. Tennant open and got fouled by Chuente who thought he got it all. That was a great cut for by Tennant, makes a quick cut. The inbounder finds him, tries to feed him up high for the slam. Can't get it, but he will have an opportunity for two free throws at the line. Gales ball. Gales down 13. Back for three. No. That got it. A dead again. Lost the handle. Chuente, picked up by Tennant, backing him down. Lost it, Kelvin. Lucas Silas, two points. Came into today averaging 35 in these playoffs. Bet, goes cross court. Kelvin, bodies falling, and the Badgers get the ball. Badgers want him running the offense. Goes right into Tennant and charged. And now Jordan Chuente's got two. That's a huge play there by Tennant. Chuente coming in the star player for the Badgers. And well, Tennant gets his feet down and well takes the body contact. And well, you can see the crowd rose for that one. A bit of momentum maybe going the Queen's way. Fantastic foot movement by Aaron Tennant to draw that second foul. Chuente and Leston go to the bench with 2.45 left in this first half. 
And a foul on Budioso. And he's got two. They're starting to pile up on the Badger. Yeah, which could be tricky for them later in the game, especially if they get their star players like Brown and Juente um, in foul trouble that could see the bench players come out and well, they'll have to perform in a big setting like this. Shibola comes on and now a foul called away from the ball on Michael Okeke. He was grabbing Lucas Silas and that'll put the Gales in the bonus. Three fouls on Ngandu, and he is on the floor because of the other players that need to go to the bench with their two personal. So for as well as Brock has played, Jacob, in this first half, the fouls are starting to mount up on them. Yeah, and that's because they've got their start, they've been putting their start players in the paint and trying to contest those uh, Gales attackers who are just going straight to the rim. And well, their star players do get lots of points, but if you make their star players also play that defensively, well, then the fouls are just going to add up. Shibola. Brown for three. No. Tipped up. Lucas Silas, and it's poked out of bounds from behind by Ellis. Gales within 11. Hackett will come back in for Brown. So now Brown gets a rest. Yeah, Brown, who I thought was great in that first quarter all over the court, has been a bit quiet here in the second. We'll see if he can get his game going. Lucas Silas to the rim. He's got six. A quiet half for Luca, and Shuente's going to quickly come back in, even with the two fouls. Same for Bujosa. Bullet swung around now to Hackett. Hackett to the hoop, up, no. Cole pulls it away, brings it up, gets it to Odette again. He'll drive, blocked! Okeke! And Cole Sillis says it went off Brock, but I think it, from my vantage point, it looked like it went off the Gale. Chuente and Bujoso now come in, under two minutes left. Simon Bailey's going to come in for the Gales for the first time. For Odedigan, who's playing with two. And he does play on that edge. Does Fofo. Bujoso. Juente. Bujoso. In the corner, Hackett for three. No. Rebound. Lucas Silas, good tip by Cole, and he gets it back. Cole takes it right at Chuente, but good double team by Ngandu. 70 seconds left, first half. Luca for three, no, long rebound. Loose, Kelvin to Cole. 10 on the shot clock for the Gales. Cole drives, throws it up, no call, and it's off Bailey and out of bounds, I believe. No, it's off Brock. Leston will return for Ngandu. A tick below a minute left in this opening half. The Gales could go into the locker room down single digits. I think they take it considering the way this half has gone. And if you're Brock, just being in the lead is fine with them. Road championship game. They've done everything you could hope as the road team, taking the crowd out of it and forcing the Gales to climb a mountain pretty much right from the start. Cole can't turn the corner. Shot clock's running down. Turns, it got stripped. Shot clock violation, but Brock's got the ball anyways. Good defense by the Badgers. Chuente against Tennant. Wanted to be careful not to charge again. Budioso. Still 11 on the shot clock. Budioso fumbled the ball a bit. Now he'll try again. Nice feed. Leston with the hammer and the foul on Tennant. What 
minutes Brock is getting from Marlon Leston. Yeah, that's a monster slam with only 30 seconds to go. It takes the crowd right out of it. This crowd was into it. You know, the Gale's trying to fight back a little bit, but with a huge slam like that and one, he'll head to the line to try to get the three-point play to convert. And it allows Brock to get Chuente and Budioso off the floor for the last 30 seconds. Leston averages 2.9 points a game and has four already. Missed that free throw though. The lead stays at 11 for Brock. About a five second difference between shot and game clock. Lucas Silas, Andrew McKenna's back on the floor for Brock. As is Shibola. Luca to the hoop. Layup, got it. Tough shot and a shoes on the floor. Yeah, that's a great shot there by Luca, who's been a bit quiet this game so far to his standards at least, averaging 35 here in the playoffs. That's just a huge bucket here late in the first. Bailey will come back on for defense for the Gales. Chuente and Budioso will come on for offense. Five seconds left, so the shot clock's off. Badgers will try and go into the break with a double digit lead. Gales hope to keep it at single. Hackett, Chuente, pushing it up. Shot blocked by Lucas Silas. And that'll do it for the first half. The Brock Badgers score the first 11 points of the game. Lead by as many as 14. The Gales get it down to one. But it's a nine point Brock lead at halftime, Jacob. And really, it's a story of Brock on the boards and Brock shooting threes and the Gales just trying to get themselves gathered and, and make a run. Yeah, Brock looks a lot more structured here. I mean, they you know they come in again on the road against this incredible crowd, but the thing is they've been they're they're used to playing on the road. They played all three of their playoff games against road teams, against the electricity going against them in the arena and well, they've been splashing it beyond the arc, which is exactly what they mean. They need Chuente has been incredible already at 12 already here in the first half and well he was out for most of it so that's amazing we'll see him here in the second half and see if he can do even more work but I find when he sits on the bench or even when he was off the Gales seem to get their offense going so we've got a second half to come it's been a good first half somebody is going to be crowned OUA men's basketball champion in the next hour or so you're watching the Gales men's basketball Wilson Cup championship game on OUA TV. Welcome to the inaugural and the first of many diversity in sports Botrin. Congratulations to everybody for making this all become a reality. I would highly recommend that people within the sport landscape in Canada definitely come out to this conference next year. There's so much good information that can be absorbed from here. And I think we can all be part of the change within Canada if we all actively engage in conversations like this. Coming to the Diversity and Sports Conference was one of the best experiences I ever had after coming to Canada. The people I was able to meet, the people I was able to network with, the friends I made, and the learnings I gained were tremendous. Sign up right now. Follow them on whatever plat social media platform they are. Uh, email the OUA, contact them, contact whoever you need to contact, find out when they're getting ticket sales again, and get here, get here. This is a must do every single year. Everyone needs to be here. We need to pack this place and get at it again in 2024. We don't have to work alone. We can do this together. And it shows by the numbers that are here that we want to improve and we want to 
make a better future for all Canadians. Doesn't matter where they're from, but that's the goal that we have. So thank you so much for coming to the inaugural conference and dare I say, see you next year. I belong. 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 Saying I belong carries significance. It goes beyond individual or team performance. It touches on the broader social concept of the representation of our sport. Saying I belong conveys a powerful message. A message of empathy. Inspire others from similar backgrounds. Pursue their dreams in sport while feeling supported. Saying I belong can also serve as a reminder to the sports community. A reminder of the importance of inclusivity, equal opportunity. And create an environment that celebrates and embraces diversity. It can pave the way for greater representation. Saying I belong is a powerful affirmation that everyone has a rightful place in the sport. This is what girls, this is what girls, this is what girls do. 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 This is what girls do.
where exceptional student athletes are born, where records are broken, where great plays are made, where school colors ignite passion, where champions prevail, where tradition is celebrated, Ontario University Athletics. The most successful people in life share one thing in common. They all put themselves in a position to thrive. Surrounded by people who challenge them to think bigger. And communities that support them at every turn. In the classroom. And way outside of it. If you want to set yourself up for success. If you want to give yourself the tools to achieve any goal. There's no better place to begin than Queens. We challenge. We support. You succeed. You'll be great, no matter where you go. But your greatest story starts right here. Welcome to the inaugural and the first of many diversity in sports conference. Congratulations to everybody for making this all become a reality. I would highly recommend that people within the sport landscape in Canada definitely come out to this conference next year. There's so much good information that can be absorbed from here. And I think we can all be part of the change within Canada if we all actively engage in conversations like this. Coming to the Diversity and Sports Conference was one of the best experiences I ever had after coming to Canada. The people I was able to meet, the people I was able to network with, the friends I made, and the learnings I gained were tremendous. Sign up right now. Follow them on whatever social media platform they are. 
uh, email the OUA, contact them, contact whoever you need to contact, find out when they're getting ticket sales again, and get here, get here. This is a must do every single year. Everyone needs to be here. We need to pack this place and get at it again in 2024. We don't have to work alone. We can do this together. And it shows by the numbers that are here that we want to improve and we want to make a better future for all Canadians. Doesn't matter where they're from, but that's the goal that we have. So thank you so much for coming to the inaugural conference and dare I say, see you next year. And welcome back to Kingston, Ontario, Queen's Athletic and Recreation Center. On the campus of Queen's University, it's the Wilson Cup Championship game between the top-seeded Queen's Gales, 10th-seeded Brock Badgers. Badgers lead by nine as we get set to start the second half. Bill Nicholas along with Jacob Ewing. And Jacob, first half stats tell a story. Well, yeah, Brock was just the better team in that first half, especially from beyond the arc, going nine for 19 when shooting three balls. And well, that's almost 50% compared to the Gales where they went five for 17. The batters have just been the better team offensively. You know, they get the ball, they work it around and they find that open shot. And when they get it, well, they've been lights out from beyond the arc. On the other hand though, something to mention for the Gales is that they actually have had more opportunities at the free throw line. We mentioned earlier in the game that Brock a big part of their game is getting to the free throw line more times than their opponents. Well, this game, the Gales have flipped the script. They've had a, they're nine for 11 from the line, and well, the Badgers only four for five. We'll see if the Gales can use that stat to their advantage here, here in the second half. So as we get set to start the second half, both teams starters on the floor to begin things. Chuente, Budioso, actually less than starts instead, as Lucas Silas, I think, took a shot from Budioso, no call. That's Brown inside, Shuente up for two. He's got 14, and just like that, Badgers lead by 11 to start in this third quarter. The Ailes are gonna need to figure out how to slow down the second team, OUA All-Star. A dead again, shot clock running down, Luca. Turns, fade away, got it. Made that shot a lot Wednesday night. And the Gales are gonna pick up with a little bit of pressure on Isaiah Budioso. Picked up by Cole Sillis into the corner, gets it back from Leston. Budioso, long two, no. Cole Sillis with the rebound, three Gales out. Leston trying to catch up. Cole to the hoop, got fouled by Ellis. He'll go to the line for two. For Johnny, for Willie Manigot's Brock Badgers team, as you mentioned, Jacob, really the only thing that didn't go well for them in that first half was the whistles. As they got called for 10 fouls to the Gales, eight. As you mentioned so smartly, the Gales to the free throw line a lot more than Brock in that first half, but Cole Sillis misses the first. Missed them both. Empty trip for the Gales. Can't afford that when you're trailing in a championship game. Brown. Leston. Swung around, Budioso, Brown, tipped away by Tennant. Chuente tracks it down, three on the shot clock, long three, no, rebound to Dedigan. Cole Lucas Silas just caught that pass, wasn't expecting it. Gets it back from his brother Cole, bumped by Ellis. Tries to turn on Ellis, Cole Silas, driving. 
Down low, little floater, got it. 17 for Cole, he's hobbling a bit. Might have bumped knees. Subs coming in for the Gales, who are within seven. As Jacob mentioned in the first half, they got to within one. Have never led in this game. Brown for three, blocked by a dead again. Brown got it back. Feeds Leston. Leston lets somebody go by him, but he traveled. Turnover Badgers. Yeah, the arena explodes when they find out that turnover comes through as well. But the Gales are just trying to get some energy back in this arena, and now it's only a seven-point game. They've done a great job here at the start of the third quarter, and well, they still have so much time left. A dead again him. Tennant go off, Bett and Kruger come on. Kelvin, now Cam Bett, tried to feed Silas. Might have been smarter just to do the floater. Yeah, I thought that was a bit of a two-force pass. They kind of, well, they knew the game plan coming in, so they tried to feed it right to Silas, but he had a wide open lane to the net, and I also thought Bett should just took it to the rim. Kruger, picked up by Leston. Luca, shot clock running down, and Leston, just got called for the foul. It's only his first. He's given them some great minutes off the bench, but you can see he's a little more aggressive than the rest of his teammates defensively, and he's gonna have to be careful. Lucas Silas already two team fouls on Brock. Luca wraparound pass, Kruger dunks it home. And the Gales will get a delay of game warning. Because Kruger knocked the ball away. So if the Gales were hoping to use a delay of game warning later in the game. Can't do that. If they get called for it again, it'll be a technical foul. Gales within five. Banks shot won't fall. Betts got the rebound. Got tripped. And then a steal by Ellis. Juente feeds Brown, that's blocked by Kelvin. Silas comes away with it. Silas to Luca, that's blocked. Cole gets it, goes up, scores! The lead's three. A lot of letting them play there for the last minute. And now the Gales crowd has come back to life. Budioso for three. No, Kelvin with the rebound. Gales can tie with a three. Luca, bet. Kelvin for the tie. No, rebound Budioso. Might not have been the shot the Gales wanted. Budioso, nice feed to Leston, but a better defensive play by Kelvin. Cole Sillis and a foul on Brown. That'll be his second, but already four team fouls on the Badgers. Yeah, that's gonna put up in some foul trouble and uh, going more and more into this game, especially getting late into this game. Well, that's definitely gonna come back to bite them. Cole Sillis gets a breather. Fofo Adedigan comes in. Check that, that's only the third team foul on the Badgers. Luca has 10. Far cry from the 35 he's been averaging. Misses the three, another rebound. So just like in the first half, when they got within one, they get within three, back-to-back -back trips, try threes, they miss them. And now Brock, Juente against Silas, partially blocked by the defensive player of the year. And Juente just got his third foul. Yeah, that's Brock's fourth foul already here in the third quarter. This many fouls early, early is going to put him in the bonus trouble potentially. And well, you see the replay right here. Chuente tries to go up, and the Gales defender is right there to meet him. 
Another possession. Gales down three. Lucas Stillis feeds Kruger. Kruger up, blocked from behind. And again, the Badgers make a stand. Budioso. Budioso knocks Bet down, no call. Missed the layup. Loose ball comes to the Gales. A dead again. Splits. Is he getting called? Yep. He gets called for the charge. And he just got teed up. He stepped on the hair of Chuete. And Brock will get a free throw. And I know Adetigan doesn't think he did, but he did, and he's been getting into it with the Badgers, whether rightly or wrongly, they, the officials were looking at him, and that'll be another personal foul. And just like Wednesday night, fouls are becoming a problem for the Gales number 12. Juente will get free throws. And they'll get the ball. So circle this moment. 49-46 Brock. Gales had a chance to get to within one. Don't. And now could fall behind by five even more. All this with Cole Sillis on the bench. He's back in. One of two for Chuente, but Brock still has possession. The lead is four. Almost a steal by Lucas Sillis. I was going to say, the Gales didn't get the charge call at their end and then get called for the charge. And I think that was the Tricolor's frustration. Chuente, that's just too tough a shot. Just as the shot clock expired. You just can't guard that. Kelvin drives, foul called. Is it, it is. That'll be four on Chuente, I believe. And Andrew McKenna will have to come in for Brock's leading scorer. Yeah, that is not good for Chuente. You see, every time the Gales came, come to the paint and they get fouled, you always see Chuente on the floor, on the receiving end of it. He's already got four tonight in a game which is so critical for the Badgers to come through and their star players in foul trouble. This could be bad for the Badgers. We'll see how long he sits. Because as Jacob has said a couple of times already this afternoon, each time he's been on the bench or not on the floor for the Badgers, the Gales have made their runs. Two from Michael Kelvin, Gales within four. So that ended up being a three point trip for the Badgers off the technical foul. Three-pointer missed by McKenna, but an offensive rebound. Naguandu puts it in. His first points of the game. Get the Badgers back to a six-point lead. Lucas Silas drives, fade away. Got it! That's his money move. He's got 12. And it will pick up Fudioso, McKenna. Kingston native on Kingston native, and Lucas Silas gets called for the reach. It's the fourth team foul on the Gales. Fudioso. Ellis. Trying to drive on Tennant. 
Budioso, three and a half left in the third quarter. Shot clock runs out as he misses it. He says to the referee that he got hit, but I think the Badgers need a timeout. Willie Manigot wants to talk to his team about the offense. Gales have gotten to within four. They keep getting close, Jacob, but Brock able to with stand and keep the lead. Yeah, this has been the story of the game so far. The Badgers get a lead. The Gills fight back. And well, for now, we find ourselves in a four point game on the tail end of the fight back from the Gills. Could this be the moment where they break through? They have a timeout here to talk it through, try to figure out how to punch through, and we'll see if they can get it done in the, latter, in the late stages of the third quarter. Hey fans, don't miss a minute of the action thanks to OUA.TV with hundreds of games from around the OUA, live or on demand each year. Streaming home for OUA, lets you follow your favorite teams on their quest for a coveted OUA championship. Visit OUA.TV to watch. This will be the last OUA TV men's basketball game. You can watch OUA TV tonight, 6 p.m., 7 p.m., sorry, in Ottawa, the Critelli Cup Final. Carlton Ravens will host the Queen's Gales. There's still Macaw Cup and Queen's Cup action on OUA TV in terms of men's and women's hockey, and still the Quigley and Forsyth Cup championship games to come on Friday night. Out of the Brock timeout, Gales down four, bet for three, no, tip by Tennant, no. Lucas Silas could control the rebound. And it will be Brock Ball and a and a intentional foul called on Lucas Silas. And the Gales have had a problem with referee Chris Delaney since Wednesday night. I have to say, I turned my head so I didn't see it, Jacob. But Lucas Silas just picked up his third foul. Not too sure, I didn't see it myself, but nonetheless, with the Gales, pardon me, with the Badgers being in bonus, they'll have an opportunity at the line there to extend their lead. And well, as I just said moments ago, it's the story of the game where the Gales bring it back in and the Badgers extend. Well, they'll have an opportunity here at the line to extend it even more. So, Budioso makes the first free throw. He's got one more, and then again, the Badgers will get the ball as well. So now the lead's up to six. All of this being done with Brock's best player on the bench with four personal fouls. Budioso drives, kicks it out. Ellis, McKenna for three, got it! All rookie team Kingston native Andrew McKenna stretches the lead to seven. Check that nine, but Kelvin answers. So eight points for Brock off those two technical fouls called on the Gales players. McKenna got away with a walk. At least the 2,000 referees think that. Kelvin with the rebound. Gets it up to Cole Sillis. Cross court, Bailey. Tennant, Cam Bett. Bet turns the corner, gets caught in the air. Kelvin again. Bang! The lead's back down to three. And that's back to back. Huge three balls by Kelvin. Great ball movement on that offense from the Kales, and they get the three pointer to go. Budioso. McKenna back to Budioso. Under two left, third quarter. Drive, nice feed to Ngandu, who missed the layup. Cole Sillis. Beck slows it down. Cole for the tie. No. And McKenna just threw Tennant to the ground. And I think what Willie Manigot is arguing is that Tennant went down pretty easily. 
I don't disagree, but considering that same official has called the Gales for two technical fouls in this quarter, I think you're asking for trouble if you're thinking he's not gonna call that. So both these teams need to calm down and battle each other, not the three guys with the whistles. Because this is a hard enough game to referee at the best of times, and they're doing the best job they can. I've been critical all season on some calls, but this has been a tough game to officiate. Aaron Tennant can't make them, and McKenna just got called for another foul. He was holding Cole Sillis. Frontenac Secondary School graduate gets called for the foul on the LaSalle Secondary School graduate. McKenna in his first year, Cole Sillis in his fourth and final year, his final game here in Kingston. Something I just realized as I saw Bujoso go down, kind of, he's not in the locker room, but he's on the side there, looks to be getting checked out by a trainer. He's played lots of minutes tonight, could be facing cramps, and well, hopefully for the Badgers, nothing serious. For the second time in this game, Gales are within one. 80 seconds left. Shibola. Ten on the shot clock, Brown. Brown driving on Kelvin. Puts up the floater, no. Rebound, Gale. They could take their first lead of the game. Cole, Bailey, thought about the three. Bet will take the three. No. Rebound, Bailey lost it. Badgers, it's on the floor. And the Badgers come up with it. Under a minute left. Fifth possession the Gales have had with a chance to tie or take the lead for the first time today. Three falls for Shibola. Hit every part of the rim, and it's back to a four point lead. Four second difference between shot and game clock. Cole Sillis, Cam Beck. Bet needs to shoot it. Will got the back of the rim. Here come the Badgers. They've got time. Hack it, and it wouldn't have counted anyway. But the Badgers survive another Gales comeback, and they maintain the lead. They lead by four after three. We're back with the fourth quarter after this. You're watching Gales men's basketball, the Wilson Cup championship game on OUA TV. And we're back to the Queens Athletic and Recreation Center here in beautiful Kingston, Ontario. Gales men's basketball, the OUA Cup championship game, better known as the Wilson Cup. Bill Nicholas along with 
Jacob Ewing. As we get set to start the fourth quarter, the top seeded Queens Gales and the 10th seeded Brock Badgers. Badgers have led from pillar to post so far and lead by four. It's been very, very back and forth. The Badgers just barely holding on to their lead and well, they have 10 more minutes to try and make it happen for the rest of the game. Again, their only regular season meeting this year for three, Cole Sillis has 24 and the Gales are back to within one. When they met in November, Brock led the whole way until the fourth quarter, 428 left, the Gales built a six point lead, but then Brock came back one by four. It's eerily similar to that game. Three by Ewing, got it! Every time they need a shot, they get it. And the Badgers are back up four. Cole Sillis gets a pack from Isaac Kruger. Leston picks up Cole. Cole drives, no call. Fofo Adedigan's back on the floor with his four personal fouls. Chuente and Leston just ran through Lucas Sillis. And Leston actually may have hurt his knee. So Ngandu will come in. I think he was coming in for him anyways. Something to know, Chuente still on the bench here. Not coming out to start, as he said. We had, he has four personals, I believe, at the moment. So he's in foul trouble. He will definitely come back into this game, but it's just the question is when. And you wonder if Willie Manigot is just going to bide his time because his team's leading right now. He doesn't have to bring him in yet. But as you said, Jacob, he's coming. Cole Sillis gets a step and got poked in the throat by Ellis. It's on the floor, so the Gales will inbound. It's the third on Ellis. Bet for two, tip by a dead again, wouldn't drop. Just hasn't been there for Cam Bet today. Budioso, 90 seconds gone, fourth quarter. Poked away by Kruger. Kruger drives, missed the layup. Good defense by Budioso. Not to commit the foul, McKenna for three. No, and Beck gets the rebound. Lucas Silas drives, hangs, foul. If it's Ellis, it's his fourth. If it's McKenna, it's his third. And Luca wants the crowd to make more noise. The foul is on Ellis. One of their better defenders now has four personal. the drop and then Luca drives inside and two of them go up that was McKenna and Ellis both jump but the foul does go to Ellis as there was contact on that one and Luca will have some shots from the line Missed the first the Gales through three quarters 13 of 19 from the line now 13 of 20 Luca makes one, the lead down to three. Aaron Tennant comes back in, and Kruger will go to the bench. Luca has a Baker's dozen, far cry from the 30 plus games he's put up in the quarters in the semis. And still no Jordan Chuentek. This is Shibala. Brown drives into Tennant, contact, no call, and it's off the Gales. And good sportsmanship by Aaron Tennant to help up Javon Brown. Sixty-five, sixty-two. The Brock Badgers trying to win 
Their second OUAA banner in two years. The Gales trying to claim their first since 1956-57, and they shared it that year. It would be their first solo championship since the 1930s. Shibola knocks down Bent, no call. Brown's open for three, missed it, and it didn't hit the rim. So it's a turnover, and you wonder, and keep looking at that Brock bench to see if Chuente will get up. No so. sign of him yet. Yeah, as you said, they're holding him off until they die, They really need him. And well, the Gales have an opportunity here to, well, try to get the game even closer. It's a three-point game. Something I've noticed, though, that it's when it's a three-point game that the Gales try to go for the three ball. And I think they're going for it too much. They need to play safe, and they need to move the ball around, get the easy two, and well, work their way past the Badgers, not just try to tie it up right now with a three. Casillas drives, goes up, scores. The Gales are within one again. They're at close to the mountaintop. Can they get to the mountaintop? Budioso. McKenna almost traveled. Got rid of it soon enough. In the corner, Shibola drives, kicks it out. Brown for three, got hit. He got hit, and that's the day for Fofo. And it's the right call. He did hit his arm. But again, Adetagun's problem is it's been the same official that's called him for every foul. Wednesday and today. Yeah, you can see some frustration from him as he heads to the locker room. He's an emotional player, and this is a big game, so obviously the emotions are gonna come through. We'll see what the Gales can do without him in the lineup. He's a big body, and he gets a lot of things done. Well, and I won't speak to the other four fouls, but that, unfortunately, was a foul. He got the shooter on the arm, had to be called. And Brown puts in the first two free throws and nails the third. So again, the Gales get to within one and then Tennant throws it away. Kelvin thought it was going to bet and an unforced error by the Gales and suddenly they're down four. Again, this is all with Jordan Juente on the bench with four personal fouls. Budioso, no. Kelvin pulls down a strong rebound. Cole Sillis, bet for three. No, it just hasn't been there for the native of England. And Juente gets up and he's coming back in. Drive by Brown for two. He's the first player on Brock to 20 points. Tennant up, got it. And a tee on Lucas Sillis, or is it on Aaron Tennant? And Lucas Sillis has four personal fouls. He had gotten the warning for earlier, and he now gets the T of fourth. Check that third technical foul. Check that. It's a. This is a technical foul. The other one was an intentional foul, and referee Chris Delaney is not a friend of many pro Gales fans. Is he about to call? He's sending Lucas Silas off the floor. Lucas said something to Coach Delaney. And again, you know, you don't want to <coughs> speculate. But the Gales certainly had 
their beefs with referee Delaney on Wednesday. And I'm sure that that's carried over to today. But in sports, you got to figure it out, right, Jacob? I mean, Chris Delaney's not going to stop officiating. And now Lucas Silas has four, goes to the bench. Jordan Schuente has come back on with his four personal fouls. Have they ejected Lucas Silas? Here the booze rain down, and well, Luca just head to the locker room. And I don't know if that's to cool off or whether he's actually gone. Of course, we won't get any details up here. The technical foul shot is made by Budiosa. And give credit to Brock. Brock has just sort of let the Gales have their moments of implosion and have kept the lead. So without their leading scorer for the playoffs, the Gales are gonna have to try and come back against a very good Badger team. Brown misses the shot. Brown again, Chuente. McKenna turns and they don't shoot it. Turnover Badgers, there's still plenty of time left. If Lucas Silas has been ejected, then that. He better have said something really, really nasty to have that happen. Cole Silas misses the three. Good hustle by Kruger to keep it, try and keep it Gale's ball. The Brock contingent that made the trip from St. Catharines are making their noise. Still no sign of Lucas Silas, and if he's been ejected, that's a shame. And now Chuente gets is the victim of an even upper. I'm going to call it like it is, folks. Gales are upset that Chuente didn't get a technical foul as well. Steph Barry feels like his players have been singled out for tees. Juente just fouled out on a charge, but that to me, Jacob, is an even upper because of what happened to Lucas Silas. I mean, That's just my opinion. And I know there's people watching right now from far and wide who might disagree with me, but you know, the two, our two players that we keyed on when this game opened are now sitting on the bench and in the locker room, and I would argue they should both only have three fouls because a couple of their fouls were not fouls. Yeah, no, I agree with you, but that's the battle of the playoffs. Your bench has got to come up big. It's a team game. Yep. No, you're right, Jacob. You're right. And Brock, give them credit, they've played. They haven't been called for a single tee yet. The Gales have been called for three. Budioso. Brown. McKenna. Budioso. Banked it in and didn't call it, but he'll take it. Leads back to five. Bet. Gets it to Kruger. Drives. That should be a charge. No, it's a block on McKenna. I give up. Looked like Andrew was there in time. I got to stop guessing on the fouls, Jacob. Yeah, sometimes it just seems like a coin flip. It could go either way. And well, well, I I say every broadcast, the block charge is the toughest call for any official in any sport. It is by far impossible for somebody that's not an official to be right on their opinion, whether it's a block or a charge. So, again, I need to get back to calling, calling names. Kruger makes both, Gales within three. Oh boy, a lot's happened in this one. 
And we've still got over four minutes left. Budioso picked up by Kruger. Brown for three. No. Tracked down, but Ellis stepped out of bounds. Crowd's getting into this. Again, the Gales have a possession where they could theoretically tie, but as Jacob, you mentioned, maybe it's just about getting to within one, not about getting it all on one shot. Cole Sillis trying to pick up for his brother, Kruger. Oh my goodness! Isaac Kruger from downtown. And we're tied for the first time today. Budioso for three. No, long rebound, Ellis. Budioso will reset. Trying to drive on Cole Sillis. Does, Kruger forces him to dish it off for three. Ellis in and out. Kruger with the rebound. Beck gets knocked down. The Gales can take their first lead of the game at the foul line as Brown just got his third. They have worked all game long to this moment. 40, 37 minutes into this game, and the Gales have two opportunities from the line to finally take a lead. The Badgers have been in front of all game long, and I believe we see a timeout called. Willie Manigot, smart timeout here. Let Cole Sillis think about it. Let his team calm down a bit. And just everybody take a breath. <laughs> a lot has happened. As far as we know, and by the fact he hasn't come in in the last little bit, Lucas Sillis has been ejected. Well, for that's... two technicals by referee Chris Delaney. Jordan Chuente, second team conference all-star for the Brock Badgers, has fouled out. My throat's giving out. And Jacob, we've got a tie game. You couldn't ask for a better situation than this in the Wilson Cup, the finals. I think, 70... I think both head coaches would tell you I'd take a 20 point lead over a tie game. <laughs> exactly. Just the something you gotta think of though is the nerves of the boys on the floor. They gotta be feeling it right now, especially the Badgers. They've had the lead all game long. They're playing the villain here in Kingston. And well, now they, the Gales have finally caught them. They finally have caught up and tied up at 73. And well, the Badgers have got to feel they felt good all game with the lead. And well, now that lead that they've had all game could be torn away from, away from them with these two free throws. And Cole badly missed the first. Three oh five left in regulation. Missed them both. And who was in too early? It was the Gales. So we stay tied at 73. Wow, Bell, I hate to say it. It could be a curse, though. I mean, they just had two amazing opportunities to finally take the lead after all game long. Couldn't convert, but they still have 304 to try to make something happen. Badgers. Gales are picking up full court. Pujoso just gets it. And we're into the last three minutes of regulation. I thought Wednesday night semifinal between Queens and Toronto was the best game I've been a part of. This one's challenging it. Into the corner, Brown. McKenna for three, the hometown boy! Timeout Gales! The front next secondary school graduate. First team rookie, or sorry, OUA rookie team puts Brock back into
to a three-point lead. That's a huge shot from the hometown boy, Andrew McKenna. He gets the ball wide open beyond the arc. This is his first, this is his fourth playoff game overall in his first ever championship game. Late in the game, it's a tie game. The pressure's on and he sinks it. The batter's up by three. Two for three from behind the arc. And we saw this late in double overtime on Wednesday night. It's the wave at the arc. See if we get a little St. Catherine's participation. No. The Brock fans will stay focused on their team. 2.45. Time left in regulation. Brock by three. Bet. Pushes it up quickly to Kruger. Kruger to the hoop, stripped by Brown. Cole Sillis to inbound. Tennant up, got undercut, no call. They let it go, and Brock's got the ball, 228. Up three. Ellis. Brown drives, feeds. Ningando got blocked. Tennant turns, trying to back down McKenna. Bet. Drives, floater, no. Rebound Brock, another empty trip for the Gales. Gales have fouls to give. Tennant guarding Budioso. Swung, Brown, McKenna. Drives, Budioso, floater, no. Rebound comes to the Gales, bet to Cole Sillis, 85 seconds left in regulation. Cole, Kelvin to tie, yes! No timeout by Brock. The Badgers will just run the play. Every time the Gales have tied or gotten close, the Badgers have responded. Can they do it again? Brown. Four on the shot clock. Devon Brown drives, beautiful pass. Shot miss. Over the back, Kelvin got the rebound. Gales have the ball. Cole Sillis, his brother's in the dressing room. Cole puts it up and wouldn't drop. And Brock's got the ball. They're not gonna call a timeout. 11 second difference, shot a game clock. You can hear what the crowd wants. Budoso for the lead. No, rebound Kruger. The Gales have time to try and win this. Bet, Cole Sillis, six seconds left. It's hero time. Cole, got it! It's a miracle by the local boy. A court storm in Kingston. And for the first time since 1956 57, the Gales are golden in OUA men's basketball. They are Wilson Cup champions. The Gales. They break through the curse that has been going all game long, Bill. They haven't had a lead until zero seconds left of regulation. Goal 
Silas, 29 point performance. Incredible. And the Brock Badgers are dismayed and I don't blame them. They played a perfect, perfect game this afternoon and got beaten on a shot that Cole Silas didn't call glass on. No, he did not. He put in two defenders in his face with hands up. Silas throws up a miracle. Thanks perfectly off the backboard, ran into the net. Money, cash, whatever you want to say, the Gales. You can't, you, getting back to Brock, you can't say they didn't defend him. They did everything possible, just got a break off the shot. Yeah, Brock, an incredible game by them. A team that maybe on paper wasn't even supposed to be here. The 10th seed coming to the playoffs. They played villain the three playoff games before this, making it to the finals. Incredible effort by this team. They play as a team on the offense, on the defense. And well, unfortunately for them, it came down to that final dagger. Both teams, of course, qualify for next week's national championships. And as Jacob said, the Badgers came in 11-11 as a regular season record, a down year by their standards, ran through the toughest path anyone could ask for in a playoff. Beat the four-time defending national champion Carlton Ravens on their own floor by one. Went to Ottawa, beat the two-seed Ottawa Gigi's who had been ranked number one in the country pretty much all year until the playoffs and beat them not by one, but by 23. And then they go to London and beat the third seeded Western Ontario Mustangs by three. And here today, they are beating the Queens Gales the entire game, lead by as many as 14, but at the buzzer, is the only time they'll trail. And I thought, Jacob, Wednesday night semifinal between Toronto and Queens, a double overtime game, was the best game I ever saw at the arc. This rivals it, and you hope these two teams do it again next week in Quebec City at the Nationals. Yeah, you can't beat this. The atmosphere was electric all game long. And well, for a moment like that, the dagger where the crowd runs on the floor, swarms Cole Sillis after his 29 point performance. That is what dreams are made of. You had to also think that Cole, during that shot, had in his mind the 2022 OUA men's basketball finals where he lost to this very Brock team. And well, he gets the reverse decision here. His last game at the arc, He's one of the three graduating seniors. Lucas Silas is on the floor because the game is over so he can come back on. So he was indeed injected by referee Chris Delaney. That's a topic for another time. Unfortunately, Jordan Tuente fouled out, which is also a shame. And those things all aside, these two teams played a whale of a game and They'll have to wait for their seedings to find out their path next week in Quebec City. But the Gales do avenge, as you mentioned, two years ago. And what a game. I mean, it's hard to tell Brock what a game when you're on the losing end of this, but they've still got next week. Yeah, exactly. They had, knowing how good they played all playoffs long, they have to feeling they have to be feeling good going into next week, going into the Nationals, knowing how good of a team they can play and well how much potential they have. 29 points for Cole Sillis, 20 for Javon Brown. Our two players that we told you at the beginning of the game that you had to watch. Jordan Chuente fouled out. Lucas Sillis was ejected. A lot of other stuff happened. You're gonna need to watch the game again because Jordan and I won't remember it all. But I don't think 
we have to look far for our game MVP. And I think it came courtesy of the bank off the glass. It definitely did. You know, coming into this game, we saw the players to watch. It was Luca Silas. He averaged 35 coming into this game. And well, Luca not having that type of game, he still had a cup of a decent amount of points. But for Luca Silas type of points, it what didn't match his 35 average. And who else but his brother, Cole Silas, to step up in the moment, drops 29 and gets the dagger. And the ironic thing is. In the quarters and the semis, Cole had struggled. Averaged nine points coming into today. But on a day where his brother, who was averaging 35, struggled with possibly things on the floor that didn't involve basketball and tough defense by Brock, he comes through with 29 points and the game-winning shot at the buzzer. Both teams will get medals. Again, as I mentioned, the Badger, or the Gales, last won the Wilson Cup in 56-57, but they shared it with Assumption. The last time they won it on their own was 1935-36. So, it's been a while yeah. that Kingston has been at the top of the OUA men's basketball mountain and we're now going to turn it over to our PA system and Jacob and I will add some things if we get a chance. If it's not Cole Sillis, I give up. So do I. It better be Javon Brown then. <laughs> exactly. Okay, I guess we're not doing the player of the game. What are we doing? I think we're gonna do the championship trophy first. Or there are all UA people running around. There's. Here we go. Jeez. I gotta say, Jacob, I'm shocked. So am I. Who could have guessed, Bill? Cole Sillis. And I, I wonder what our OUA play of the week will be this week. Honestly, it's a toss-up. I'm not <laughs> too sure. LaSalle Secondary School graduate. He and his brother Luca lost an OFSA championship at the buzzer in their final game of high school. And the irony that in there, in his final game of OUA basketball, he wins it at the buzzer. So now they're going to give awards to the people recognized by the conference. So Luca Silas will be involved in this as the defensive player of the year. Andrew McKenna, the Kingston native who hit what seemed like a massive three to Rook getting his rookie team award. Great rookie season for the Frontenac Secondary School graduate. Hit a three to make it 76-73, but then Michael Kelvin and then Cole Sillis canceled that out. Jordan Chuente, the second team conference all-star, the only Brock all-star. So watch out for this Badger team next year because the only one in his fifth and final year is Javon Brown. So there's a lot of talent coming back to St. Catharines next year. Cole Sillis, second team all-conference. Last year was a all-Canadian. But this year with teams keying on him, his brother, Lucas Sillis took over and Steph Barry the coach of the year in the OUA so he'll be going for the Ken Shields award next week 
against the other three conferences coaches of the year. And if the first Wilson Cup title since 1956-57 isn't grounds enough to get coach of the year nationally, as I've said earlier, I give up. <laughs> and Lucas Silla, first team conference all-star, as well as the defensive player of the year in the conference. I'm sure he would have liked to be on the floor for the game winning shot. But I guess the next hope is that he's not suspended for a game because of the ejection. I don't think he will be, but that's for our friends next week to wonder about. And again, don't want to overplay this, but this is a dangerous team next week in Quebec City, Jacob. They, for all rights, controlled this game for 39 minutes and 59 seconds and are getting the silver medals because of a unbelievable shot by an unbelievable player. Yeah, they're such a team-based they're such a team-based team, you know? They play as a team, they throw the ball around the arc. Uh, something I loved when watching them is they don't have, they did have Chuente who's a star player, but what they do is they work the ball around and they find those open shots. And especially in that first half, they were complete money from beyond the arc and that's why they had such big, such a big lead. Well, you want, whoever ends up the opponent of Brock in the quarterfinals next Thursday or Friday in Quebec City, who do you key on? I mean, Chuente can can hurt you. Javon Brown had 20 today. Was the leading score. They had a different leading score in all three of their playoff wins coming into today. Uh, Budioso can score it. They've got guys coming off the bench that can play less than I thought was outstanding. Maybe picked up a couple of over aggressive fouls in his time on the floor, but I thought gave them valuable minutes. I just, I, I find it hard to believe that one of these two teams, if not both of them, are gonna at least be in the final four next week in the Nationals. Oh, for sure. For sure one of these two teams will be there next week. If, well, if not both in the final yeah. four. Victoria will be the one seed. They are the number one ranked team in the country. They won Canada West. They will get the one seed, I would imagine. Gale should get the two seed. The interesting conversation will be the wild card spot, which one would think could go to the Ottawa GGs. It's between Ottawa and Calgary. Ottawa got knocked out in their semifinals by these Brock Badgers. Calgary got knocked out in their semifinals. So it'll be very interesting to see, but if Ottawa gets in, there's a team that dominated the OUA pretty much until the last two weeks of the season when they lost to Queens by one and lost to Brock by 23. So now the Gales will get their gold medals. Please come up to receive your medals. And Number three, Lucas Hills. Again, four, it's nice to get the gold medal mm -hmm. to take away from the story of being ejected which again, I think, is a discussion for another time, even though I brought it up about nine times in the last five minutes. Cam Bett was off today from behind the arc. That's his game. But the Gales got shots made. Connor Kelly, who's been so good all year. And then there's this guy, the MVP of the game, 29 points. And the three at the buzzer off the glass. Aaron Tennant, who doesn't put a lot of points on the board, but boy was he valuable today drawing charges, getting loose balls, just getting the crowd. He's, he's just one of those workhorses. Fofo Adedigan, who had another frustrating game, fouled out like he did on Wednesday night but is so tough on the glass. And there's Scott Jenkins. 
And then Michael Kelvin, don't forget about his three that tied the game at 76 and set up Cole's heroics. Yeah, that was right after the huge three from McKenna. And don't forget as well, Isaac Kruger's one three, which is not really what he tries to do, but he made it. Simon Bailey. Both these teams again will have at least one more game. Coach, of course. Another round of applause for this year's victors. And now the fun part for this pro Queens crowd. And give, again, give Brock credit. They're standing around, they're being very sportsmanlike. It's not easy to be the silver medalist in a game and watch the other team. Or Grace will do the honors. Michael Kelvin, Luca and Cole Sillis, Cam Bett will come forward. And folks, for the first time since 1956-57, Queens is golden in men's basketball. OUA champions of 2023-2024. And Jacob, some final comments. These two teams are going to Quebec City off a heck of a basketball game. The Gales get the win, but they're both going to be hoping to come away with some silverware in Quebec City. Yeah, I think both these teams could definitely get a huge result in Quebec City. Brock, they can't they can't keep their heads low. they got to keep them high. They had a phenomenal game, and, well, what can they do? They just have to learn to, well, they had a great game. they got to build off this momentum, take it to Quebec City next week, regroup back in St. Catharines, and, well, if they're able to regroup and well, keep this phenomenal game going that they played so ga all game long, I think they're gonna have success. And for the Gales, it's been a long, long time since they've been at the top of the men's basketball mountain. They are the OUA champions. They do it on a shot at the buzzer by Cole Sillis, who finishes with 29 points. Yeah, that shot is just what that shot's just what dreams are made of. I just want to say that Cole Sillis will remember this moment for the rest of his life. He'll be telling his grandkids this one day. Just phenomenal. Final score: 79-76. The Gales are the Wilson Cup champions. For our entire crew and Jacob Ewing, I'm Bill Miklas. Thanks for watching the Wilson Cup Championship on OUA TV.